I think the lines of resistance still are the moral behaviors, it's the ethical behaviors, it's how honest are we going to be, how transparent are we going to be, how much are we going to really trust the public can understand the complexity of the risk that we're trying to manage, how much are we going to invite the public in to help us and, and to acknowledge their role as, um, as, a, as a partner in this care. And frankly, how much are we going to have to negotiate this really, really unhappy territory with the legal system? A legal system is such a anathema to most of healthcare, they don't even think that they can change it. It's just kind of a big, you know, nightmarish part of their lives. But unless we start having a dialogue with the legal system about how it's going to change, how it's going to kind of cooperate to make patient care happen in a more patient-centered way, um, we're going to find more and more lines of resistance. So what I'm really happy about with this series is moving from that notion of systems care to more and more what it means to be patient-centered and more and more what it means to, um, to, to really think about how the legal systems and the healthcare systems have to interact if we're going to really make our vision of patient safety a reality. You know, right now, we think of the role of patients um, in the patient safety movement as primarily one of motivation and inspiration. They've got you know, important stories that kind of inspire us to do better, remind us of why we became doctors and nurses in the first place. They really ground us in our values and, 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 and keep us on the, on the right road. But I frankly think that that's short-sighted. Patients can actually um, offer much more. They do see things that we just don't see in healthcare. And one way we try to depict that in the film is by giving Tibor a, a, a chance to kind of rattle off all the things that he saw. At the same time that the healthcare team is trying to piece together the system failure, he's got a pretty good view of it, and they never really think about asking him. Um, he offers it in a mediation, and I think in a lot of hospitals that offering would be missed. They wouldn't take advantage of the fact that they've got a patient who's willing to share what he saw. So, um, so that opens up, I think, a whole new line of dialogue, a whole new way of thinking about what we can learn from patients. We're not going to learn necessarily a whole lot from every patient, but by giving them the benefit of the doubt, if we kind of go in with an open mind and think, well, we might learn something from this patient, I think we're going to be surprised about, um, about what we get. A huge part of the patient safety um, discussion, really up until this point of time, has been really focused on the problem. What are we going to do to stop the mistakes, to stop the, the harm that we know we can prevent? A whole other way into it is to really think about what we do well. You know, where are our success stories um, and, and how can we analyze those and break them down to, to really understand how we created new ways of doing things? There's a whole theory of this called appreciative inquiry, but really looking at what an organization does well, building on that success, trying to get people to understand what they contribute personally to a success and really using those positive stories to generate um, a bigger and, and sort of richer transformation of the organization. When you do that, you drag sort of the energy of the organization into a whole different direction. You envision your future, you create possibility as opposed to really focusing on the problem. So I think that's an important new way to go for the patient safety movement.